Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this session of prayers. We want to adore you because we believe according to your word, where one or two are gathered in your presence, there you are in their midst. We thank you for your presence already in our midst tonight in Jesus' name. Dear Lord in heaven, as we want to worship in songs we heard, dear Lord, that you inhabit the praises of your children in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you know you've answered. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Adonai, we worship you, Son of God, you are so good, Almighty God, hallowed be thy name, your dominion is forevermore, forevermore. We worship you, Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Your dominion is forevermore, forevermore. We worship you, Son of God. Through life's journey from a 
gets to glory. All I ask is to be like him, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him, all true life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. Is to be like him. All true life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. All true life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. All true life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. But Christ that liveth in me, it is no longer I that liveth. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross, where thou hast died, draw me nearer, nearer, 
blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side, draw me nearer. blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died, draw me We shall rise up on our feet as we sing from the Congress conference program. More about Jesus would I know? More about Jesus would I know? More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus let me learn. More of his holy will, the Son. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne, Riches in glory or his own. More increase. More of his coming, Prince of Peace. More. More about Jesus. More. More about Jesus. More of his saving fullness, see. More of his love who died for me.
to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue for the reading now. Chapter 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near akin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. You have just listened to the Bible reading. And we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace, 
that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
crusades. We know the Lord is not tired of blessing us, and we will never tire of receiving from him. We have seen him move in mighty ways in response to our worship and sacrifice of praise. As Psalm 22.3 boldly proclaims, God does indeed inhabit the praises of his people. So join me as we sing for joy and welcome the wonderful psalmists and singers from nations and states and regions across the world. I am certain you will get your miracle tonight.
be praised in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come India beckons I from injustice to indomitable by Christ and from narrow minded to nurturing milk from Christ D from dissolution to a decisive decision for Christ I from idleness to independence through Christ A from abject poverty to affluent possessions in Christ. As GCK this November offers you full redemption through Christ. From India to the world, bringing salvation, solution, and liberty through Christ for all. Every yoke it will break, all the shackles it will shatter in Jesus' name. November 23, 228. 2023, 1600 hours GMT daily. Full redemption through Christ for everyone, everywhere. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will gain speed as they will receive the great fundamentals of ministry in three special days, November 24, 27, and 28. And on Saturday, young people all over the world will be elevated at Impact Academy. It will be the divine creation of heroes from zero. You follow, you go. As I grow, you follow, you grow. As I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. A life-changing experience awaits you at full redemption through Christ. Live at GCK locations across the globe. And live, their satellite and all our social media platforms. The man of God anointed international evangelist and convener of the GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kui will minister Christ with power. Along with other ministers from India. This is GCK. It is the gospel to every creature. Praise the Lord. Testimony time. As you listen to the testimonies, God will give you your own testimony. The first person. Praise the Lord. My name is Dr. Oyewusi Magdalene. I'm a medical practitioner. Here with me, the first testifier, Mrs. Aja Ruth. She has a spectacular, a spectacular testimony to give tonight. Happy listening. Praise the Lord. That is too small for my God. If you are happy with me, you will stand up and say that hallelujah very well. Praise the Lord! My name is Sister Ruth Aja. I thank God for what the Lord did in my life. November 2021, I got married. And since then, I have been looking for the fruit of the womb. So then, each of the GCKs, I will place my hand in my womb when the GS is praying and ask God to remember me. Even when other people are testifying of them having their own GCK baby, I'm praying that God Almighty should visit me with mine. Praise the Lord. March 2022, I got uh, pregnant and after some months, that is in the month of September, I lost the pregnancy. So then I was crying and praying to the Lord that, oh God, this is not your promise for me. Your promise for my life is that I will be fruitful. Praise the Lord. So uh, October GCK 2022 edition, I, got, I conceived again. Praise the Lord. And God saw me through the pregnancy. And after the June, 20, uh, June edition, this 2023, I, after the June edition, on the 3rd of July, I put to bed. Praise the Lord! God Almighty granted me a safe delivery. Praise the Lord! But Satan said, he, has, he hasn't ended. Three days after I put to bed, I saw that the baby 
stop moving, stop sucking breath, stop crying. I have to call my mommy in the Lord in the region, took him to the hospital. There at the hospital, I saw my baby going. Going, life was gradually leaving him. The doctors were rushing, looking for um, oxygen to fix on him. I said, no, you are not going to fix oxygen on this baby. This is GCK baby, nothing will happen to him. They said, do you want to, you, do you want to treat your baby by yourself? I said, no, this is GCK baby. The Lord God Almighty is with me. Our uh, daddy in the region was praying. Everybody were, were praying for this baby. Praise the Lord. And at the end of it, God brought this baby back to life. God brought him back to life. I here with me now, I have my baby testimony. The Lord God of heaven has wiped away shame out of my eyes. And God of heaven has given me my own GCK baby. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God will remember you tonight. And God will give you, those of you desiring a GCK baby. Put your hand together for Jesus. Praise God. Praise Almighty God. I'm here this evening. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The next testifier is Mr. Oibo, John Odion. He has a testimony. Go ahead. Praise God. Praise God. I'm here this evening to testify what God has done for me. I have bundles of joy. That's why I'm here this evening. Praise God. Amen. My name is Adoipo John Odion from SA, this, SA Group of this Bini East Region, Edo State. Praise God. By God's grace, I'm born again. My testimony run doors. Not quite long ago, I was having serious injury in my right hand. I could not lift it up. I could not use it to walk. But when I came to this crusade on Thursday, man of God was praying that wherever you are feigning pain, you should place hand on it. Since then, the pain gone absolutely. And with remedy, I, 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 you see me now, I can raise the hand up. Praise God. Praise God. Put your hand together for Jesus. It will never come back again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Here with me is Mrs. Igba Lois. She has a testimony. Praise the Lord. My brethren, my name is Isla from Adolodigi. So I want to testify what God has done in my life. What man cannot do, God has done it free for me. So in my life, I have what's called a spinal cord. And this was disturbed many years. So I went to UBTH. They told me that I should go test. I run many tests. And they said, I'll go MRI test. And when they go, they said that the bone has shifted. That final thing is for surgery. And when they mentioned the money on surgery, I don't have that such money. So I was looking upon God. I cried. I said, daughter, what will I do? He have given me bed that I used to hold my waist so that he will assist me. Because all my legs sometimes will be like to paralyze. It will help me because the pain is so severe. So when the, the daughter had given me the bed, I hold it. I will used to hold my bed. But when the time of, time of last month, God had touched me with a divine healing. When the man of God is praying, he said that you will lay hand whenever you have problem. And I lay hand that back. Because the bone is already shift out. And when he touch it, we come out. So when the man of God is praying, I lay my hand. I have faith that God will do it. That last month of all, that is on San Bengue crusade. So I lay hand and I to pray, say, Amen. I was having heavy before, before and heavy was, heavy was light. And that's where I have received my healing. Today, what I cannot do before I can do it. I cannot bend and sweep. I cannot walk. May God have free me today. Praise the Lord. That the God bless in Jesus' name. Whatsoever holding anywhere, loose him and let him go. The next. I'm out. 
Praise the Lord. Mrs. Gladys Omojola, she's excited because God has done a great thing in the life of her daughter. But she's here to, sh she's here to share the testimony. Let's listen to her. Praise the Lord. The Lord has done it for me. I, I said a time like this we come that I will stand and give testimony. During the GCK, all the GCK I'll be attending. I always say God. I say, God, if you do it for me, I will move from district to district and give testimony. My name is Sister Gladys Omojoda from Welfare District. I came to testify on behalf of my daughter. What the Lord done in her life during this GCK crusade. My daughter graduated six years ago. The whole had resolved because they say, because I refuse to compromise. They say I should pay 150000 before the result could be released. I said, never. My glory, we go to God, not to man. We have been praying. My brother pray. My pastor pray. All to no avail. When the GCK, when I heard that it, our father in the Lord is coming to Edo State, I said, it is my time to testify. I said, in this GCK, I will testify in the midst of all the brethren. Today, I'm here to testify. Praise the Lord. When the man of God was praying yesterday, anytime he's praying, any of the GCK say, lay your hands where you had the challenges. I say, God, Baba, I don't have a pain. The pain I have is my daughter resort. I will raise up my right hand. The remaining one, I straight to Ambusali University. When the man will pray, I say, I believe it is done. During the yesterday, as he was still praying, losing, not even he now, lose her and let her go. My daughter will lose. Oh, it was loose, was loose, was loose yesterday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. After the, man, after the prayer of the man of God, I was so excited. I was going home rejoicing. Because I know my daughter will be loose. This afternoon, to God be the glory. I was going. I said, let me go and buy what I'm selling before I come to the crusade. I hold my hand. As I was going, I heard the call. It was the demon of the faculty that called me. He said, sister, sister, your daughter did not be released. Release. Praise the Lord. Hey. Put your hand together for Jesus. God is great. Tonight is your turn. Tell yourself, tonight is my turn. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's joy in the house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mr. Lucky James is here. God has done something for him. He wants to share with us. Let's listen to him. Church, praise the Lord. My name is Lucky James. I'm here to testify the goodness of the Lord for my life. I was having a year problem. My year was paining me. Um, for almost five years now, they, they give me some treatment. Later, the a year stopped. Then later it come back again and start worrying me. Sometimes it's like something is working inside my ear. Like at night I want to sleep. It's like something is moving inside my ear. But when they talk about this GCK edition in those states, then I say I must come to this GCK. When I come this uh, second day of the GCK, when our daddy was praying of the uh, prayer of miracle, he said we should raise one hand up and we should put one, lay one hand on where it's pain. Then I put my hand on, in my ear. After the GCK prayer, it's like something just move out of my ear. Then from that day to today, I don't receive any prayer. I'm free. Church, praise the Lord. You will never see it again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Here with me is Mr. Ugochuku Raymond. God has done something for the family. Let's listen to him. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, I am Brother Ugochuku Raymond. I'm born again by the grace of God. The Lord did something miraculous in my family. I have about five children. Among all of them, the firstborn was around 18 years since she was born. My second born, 15 years, the other one, 13, the other one, 11. And the four of them, since they were born, 
they always urinate in the bed. And as we are coming to this GCK, we have done everything possible, no solution. We prayed as a family that if you attend this GCK, the Lord will roll away that burden and that predicament must stop. As we come here on Thursday, we prayed and believed God when the man of God prayed. After that night, we went at Ubi Okoje where we are lodging at Camp Grand. In the night, none of them wept. The following, the following day, Friday, none of them wept. On Saturday, none of them wept. Sunday, none of them wept. Up to today, I said, the Lord who have, done, who have done it for me, it will remain permanent in Jesus' name. You will never see it again, and it will not occur again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It is Ijemunachi goodness. God has done something for her, and she wants to testify. Church, praise the Lord. This hallelujah is too small for my God. Stand up and say the hallelujah. My name is Goodness Ijemunachi. I'm from um, Eweka Group. So by the grace of God, I... I got my healing yesterday. God was too good for me. I don't know about you, but I know that God is too good for me. So, it was um, last three years, I was having chest pain. It was like severe to me. I've taken different types of drugs. Even sometimes my mom will be, will be asking me, ah, ah, this drug is for what? I say, mommy, it's for my chest pain. She say, ah, this is too, too much for you. I've been praying, all the GCK I've been attending, I've been asking God, how can a little girl like me will be suffering from this chest pain? I say, God, no, that I must got my healing. So, unfortunately, yesterday, because I traveled, so I came back on Saturday. So, yesterday, when our daddy was praying, I was sitting back, uh, uh, at the back there. So, he, he asked us to lay our hands whenever we are having challenges. So, I lay my hand on my chest. I laid the other one on my head. So I was praying. The final amen. Brethren, I said the final amen. Say the final amen. The final amen. I got my healing. Yesterday, I said, no, let me wait so that I will confirm it if this is real. Yesterday evening, I slept well. Even before, if I press my chest here, it will be paining me seriously. I leave it yesterday. So this morning, the same thing. I said, no, this evening, I must share the goodness of the Lord. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those of you who have listened to all the testimonies, don't be a spectator. You will be a partaker tonight. Solomon, God adieu. This is a Everyone. Praise the Lord! Today, aujourd'hui, is a special day in your life. No matter where you are, it's time to go up higher. You are the lowest point. Or you are the middle point. Anywhere you are. It's my privilege. It's my calling. It's my joy. To take you from where you are. And to tell you come up. Come up. Come up higher. The Lord today will be taking hold of your life you as an individual and he'll show you the way up and you will look up and you will pray and the power from heaven will come upon your life everything that held you down everything that pushed you down 
everything that locked you up today is a day to go up higher and pay attention just a short moment together and your life will go up let's pray together father we well, thank you a glorious day a gracious day a marvelous day that you call everyone here and you are telling us come up higher lord i pray there'll be no exception every boy every girl every young man every young woman everyone present here we will go up higher no useless life here and no downtrodden life here no life that will be locked up permanently here and online everywhere everywhere in every country as we listen today you break every chain you destroy every yoke and you lift everyone higher confirm each in every life thank you lord in jesus name we pray god bless you you can sit down in the few minutes we have together i want you to pay, pay close attention my topic to you is walking on the king's highway constantly going higher walking on the king's highway there are many ways in life there are many paths in life and many of those paths they lead to despair to the dungeon the race one highway is the highway of the king everyone that steps into that king's highway must go up all you need to do today i'll show you discover that highway decide to walk in that highway determine to remain in that highway and then a little step we call it baby step one leg after the other and you focus on the destination you want to get to after some months after some years you will be high up by the grace of god I'm reading Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 it says and highway shall be there unmistakable and highway shall be there made by the God of heaven and highway shall be there and it is made for everyone that wants to go up and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness and unclean the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the way fearing men Though fools shall not err therein. He says, even though we're foolish, 
even though we're ignorant, even though we're unwise, we step on God's highway. And it says, the foolish, the ignorant, the baby, the one who doesn't know anything, once he steps on that way, he'll keep on walking and making progress. Why does he say they shall not even err therein? Because there is no bypass. There is no other way that we can mistakenly get into. The highway of the Lord is an expressway. And it is straightforward. And everyone that steps therein, he will go higher. Walking on the king's highway that means it's a continuous thing it's not that i walk forward a little i walk backwards a little that's the reason many people don't go up higher they take three steps forward the following day they take four steps backward when you take three steps forward and four uh, steps backward, you actually go back one step. But, but if, you, if you are consistent, if it's constant, and you take one step forward today, one step forward tomorrow, one step forward, forward, forward every time, and you are walking consistently and you are walking courageously and you are walking purposefully and you always take one step forward one step forward one step forward you will get there and so it takes a decision it takes a determination it takes a dedication that you say i take the steps forward every time if we're going to go up higher that's what come up higher the word come is a verb a word of action when it says stand if you keep on sitting down you don't understand the word stand as a verb a word of action when it says come if you remain where you are and you don't have a desire a decision a response you don't understand the word come as a verb a word of action if you remain where you had been you do not understand come up and you know no matter how a room may be high up you are there at the ground floor and you look up that room that place is high and you say how do i come there he didn't say jump up higher i cannot i cannot jump and get to the top of that building but the architect who constructed the building and who knows that people will go from the ground floor and go to the last floor up he knows we cannot jump up higher and so they build the staircase and step after step one step after the other 
We're making the movement. And we're coming up, coming up, coming up higher. The great architect of earth and heaven. The creator builder of earth and heaven. The provider of all things on earth and heaven. He knows he's going to call us to come up higher and because of that he builds the staircase one step after the other and if you take those steps eventually you'll get there higher i will get there higher say that for yourself I will get there that higher place I will get there you don't jump up to get there you go up step after step to get there everybody starts at the baby level nobody is born a doctor nobody is born an engineer nobody is born an achiever nobody is born a conqueror nobody is born a militant courageous soldier we all start at the ground level and god has built all the steps that you don't remain at the ground level all your life there's a level called despair we don't stay there all our lives there's a level called discouragement we don't stay there all our lives there is a level called average we don't stay there all our lives there's a level called slavery of slavery for despondency we don't stay there all our lives i look up i say that is where i am destined for and then i have a desire I say I'm not going to remain at that level of despair and discouragement on my life I have a desire I want to move on my desire must be followed up with decision and I decide that my life will not remain at the ground level a desire a decision and then i have determination many things will come in life that will try to send me back where it was coming from the place of despair the place of discouragement the winds will blow at me but I have decided on the basis of desire that will never be tampered with by any creature on earth and after that decision I have determination that that height I have seen that higher ground I have envisaged that great vision of that higher place I have the determination I'm getting there and then I have diligence when determination has been set 
I am diligent in everything I do that every day will add to my progress of going higher that every act will add to my decision of a destiny that is higher and then i have the devotion that i am devoted to this this one thing i do so that i get to that higher ground and then i link up with god i make a demand i make a petition i make prayers to god and the help of god and the assistance of god and the goodness of god and the promise of god that can never fail that assists me and he gives a, a decree to confirm my demand going up higher is a journey and i never forget where i'm going i never forget the determination and the destination higher 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 somebody shout higher you reach there in jesus name walking on the king's highway constantly going higher when you came at three things here number one we're looking at dissatisfaction with the hedged way of limitation there are lives that are hedged around and because of the hedging around of their lives they're limited it's like when you tie a goat to a pole the, the rope is on the neck of that goat the other side the other a part of the rope is at the pole the goat can move here and there but he will never go beyond the length of that rope you draw a circle you put a pole at the center you you put a rope at the you put the pole and then you tie the rope at that center and then you tie the other end of the rope on the neck of the goat and the goat can only go through the circumference and the radius is determined already it will not go beyond that circumference and a time comes in your life when you are dissatisfied with merry-go-round you are dissatisfied with the edge path that you have you want to break that and go beyond that's coming up going up rising up higher number two is dedication on the highway of life's liberation when the lord when the lord comes to liberate you and sets you free and all the limitations of your life all the things that hedge you down all the things that pin you down 
you're liberated you're free you're ready to go you're ready to run you're ready to come up higher dedication on that highway of life's vibration and now number three is the diligence in the heavenly way for the lord diligence in the heavenly way for the lord and to the lord and as we take the step one two three we get to the higher ground higher possession higher place higher achievement the lord has called us to we're looking at number one here number one is dissatisfaction with the hedged way of limitation i have some references here and there i will say in a bracket i open the bracket with deuteronomy chapter one i close the bracket with deuteronomy chapter two think about that in many lives when their bracket opens there is a hedge there is a limitation there is a merry-go-round as they were last year they are this year as they are this year they might be next year they do the same thing think the same way plan the same way walk the same way all years of their lives their lives open with this reference and their lives close with this reference all you have in between is limitation 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 but you become dissatisfied with that this cannot go on forever like this look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 6 the Lord our God speak unto us in hurry saying ye have dwelt long enough in this mount you have remained in this class for so long you have remained at this same level long time you have been hovering around this place for a long time you have been limited to this for a long time think about your life what have you been doing there long long time that you remain in the same position you remain at the same level you remain in the same situation you remain in the same problem you remain in the same failure you remain in the same disappointment you remain in the same place a long time the lord said unto them and the lord is saying unto you think 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 about your life ye have dwelt long enough in this mount look at the first part of verse 7 there in the first part of verse 7 it says it says now turn you and take your journey and go to up to the mount the failure of the past in all the disappointments of the past in all the merry-go-round of the past enough 
movement without progress enough work without achievement enough here and there without any place or purpose enough have you thought about your life your character your behavior your habit your spirituality your achievement anything any, anything you have been doing are you not doing the same thing no progress are you not praying the same prayer no progress are you not trying to act action 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 no progress the lord wants us to think through in our lives that we are not just living there at the same level doing the same thing merry going round and yet no progress it's like when the way is hedged and what you did 10 years ago is what you're still doing now where you were 40 years ago is where you are now a terrible sorrowful limitation because of the way that is hit by difficulties and challenges and we're, near, and we're not removing the hedges and we're just there limited let me close the bracket now with Deuteronomy chapter 2 and I'm looking at verse 3 it says in verse 3 it says ye have compassed this mountain long enough turn ye upward not watch why the children of israel why why they always moving and not getting up why the children of israel were still doing all their merry go around 40 years and they didn't reach the land of promise walking expending energy eating walking rising exercising and yet there's no proof that any better thing coming in their lives let me tell you about something about them that you may learn something about yourself number one they are deliverance without devotion the lord delivered them out of the land of egypt but there was no devotion to the lord that gave them deliverance in our lives we go for prayer we have deliverance but there is no goal to which we are dedicated in our lives we're healed when people pray for us and yet there is no goal there is no purpose there is no plan there is no destination that we are dedicated to that's why people do merry go round they get healing they get deliverance because there's no devotion there's no progress in their lives do you remember the story of the children of israel they got manna from heaven and they ate manna every day they arch the manna they put in their mouth they didn't have manners character behavior in the sight of the lord manna to eat no manna in their character that's why they were doing the merry-go-round and they were not making progress <laughs> 
manna is provision from heaven is given by God and we eat that and yet no manners no changed life no changed behavior the grace of God was not poured into their lives to have the manners the Christian character the behavior and because there is no manner the manner the edge did not move them forward to go up higher if you look at the children of israel hundreds of thousands of them that didn't get higher to the promised land they had triumph but they didn't have tamed tongues they triumphed over the enemies in the wilderness they triumphed over pharaoh and his chariots in the red sea you see when people have triumph over the local challenge there over the local problem there but they do not have tamed tongues their tongues will be bringing them down every time the children of Israel had healing but he didn't have holiness he brought them out and there was no feeble person among them and he made the healing covenant with them he said i am the lord that healed thee but you know they didn't have holiness joined with that healing that's why all those people that had the healing in the wilderness healing in the as they were coming out of egypt many of them did not get to higher ground to the land of canaan to the land of promise because they didn't have anything more than that healing we must add holiness to healing Those children of Israel were excited people, joyful people, happy people. Happiness alone does not get us to higher ground. They had the song of praise, they didn't have the stage of purity. And that's why many people today they have a, they have a happy life an excited life yeah, for this meeting and that meeting then this crusade in that crusade happy excited joyful but we must add the stage of purity the children of israel do you remember their story they were thirsty and there was no water to drink and they had the man of God with them. He struck the rock and water came out for them. But you know, they had water from the rock. They didn't have the willingness for righteousness. And the miracle water that they drank was not enough to take them up higher there was still merry going round in our lives we should look at the water of life that he gives and look at the willingness for righteousness that he wants us to also have uh, those people had demand for milk and honey they said where is the milk and honey well the milk and honey is available 
but they did without the desire for movement towards heaven what success do we have on earth what privilege do we have on earth if we have all the earthly supply and we do not have the willingness and the worthiness to get to heaven and so that's what god wants to do in our lives so that the edges around our lives that has been there all the time that we say lord now i have a desire i have a decision i have a determination that that higher ground i will get to the higher ground not only in academics not only in profession in the spiritual life that will make sure we are saved we are born again the new life in Christ has come to us and we have received we have embraced and the spirit of God in our heart bearing witness we're children of God that's the beginning of making that desire that decision realizable in our lives so that with all that we have got the decision to follow Christ that's devotion to the way of the Lord and then there are the deeds the, the manners the character the behavior of a true believer that follows after that and the grace of God also transforms our tongues many people talk when you should be quiet many people talk 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 and talk and they do not look at the weight or the value of the things they talk and when the grace of God comes in our lives and our tongues are transformed and our lives are transformed and then we pray with that cleansed and tame tongues and the Lord puts righteousness and holiness in our lives he gives us blessing for our body he gives us blessing for our brain and he gives us blessing for our heart for our life and we we'll live a life of righteousness and holiness by his grace then are we truly going up higher And he puts the willingness to live a righteous life at school, in college, at university, in the world, at the profession. Any way we are, we know I am here to demonstrate. I am here to show. I am here to get people to see a life of righteousness and holiness. That's the way in the hand of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, that will come up higher in proverbs chapter 15 reading from verse 19 proverbs chapter 15 what did in there from verse 19 he says the way of the slothful is an edge of thorns those who are slothful those who are idle and those who do not have any plan any purpose and any perseverance of moving up higher
those people, they, they are edged around. And it's like thorns, the wall of thorns. They cannot rise up higher. They cannot move up higher. But when you tell the Lord that you want a higher ground, that you want what God has ordained for you, you see the screen. that you want the purpose of God and the plan of God in your life, you will get higher. I said you will get higher. I said you will get higher. That is the way of the Lord. That is what the Lord has ordained. A decision for the Lord. That to say, I have decided to follow Christ. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to go up higher no turning back no turning back i have decided that with all diligence and devotion i will follow the lord no turning back no turning back that's when that's when the possibility of going up higher will happen in your life Number one is dissatisfaction with the hedged way of limitation. Number two is the dedication on the highway of life's liberation. 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 That the Lord takes you out of that disappointing life. Out of that dissatisfied life. Out of the life of despondency. That the Lord takes you out. Sets you free with salvation. Sets you free with a new life in Christ. That is when the upward journey onto that higher place, that is when it begins. And the Lord has given us a promise. He wants to take us higher. Come unto me, he said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You have been laboring, been doing that merry-go-round, and you have not achieved anything. You are laboring and you are sweating, and you have not achieved the upward journey. Now you decide for the Lord. He says, come. I'm the only one that can take you higher. He says, come. I'm the only one that can liberate you. Come. I am the only one that can set you free. And then you make up your mind, you decide, you get up, and you go in one direction. The direction of the Lord, your liberator. And say, Lord, here I come. He says, what do you want? Every time anyone comes to the Lord, the Lord will ask them. The Lord will ask him or her what do you want that i do for you and then you say i want liberation i want to walk on the highway that leads to life's liberation and he has the power he does that for you and today and today as you come you are not, not trying to go up without his help, without his grace, without his enablement. How can you liberate yourself from all the things that tie you down? As you come, you trust him that he is the one 
that can give you that liberation that he is the one that can set you free from all the things that limit your life from all the things that pin you down from all the things that will not allow you to have progress he lie breaks come unto him unto christ the one that grants you liberation he is the one that can take you from the poor situation where you are and can bring you to the throne of the kings to reign with the lord because you see all the things we can do for ourselves all the things we can achieve for ourselves cannot get us to that higher ground where joy and love and faith abound he promises us that all those who realize that they are in the dungeon of limitation and they will make up their mind and decide and they will come to him he says whosoever come to me i will in no wise cast off you come and as you come you depend on him you trust him and he will lift you higher today i said today it will lift you higher in jesus name because he is the only liberator what steps do i take because i told you that if we're going to go from the ground level and go to the high level we go step by step step by step and is the is the addition is the accumulation of all those all those tests will take that gets us to that higher ground you're responding to the invitation of christ come unto me come unto me all ye that labor and you're heavy lady to respond to that call you leave all your sins and self-centeredness behind you leave all your sins and self-centeredness behind when we talk of sin some people who read only one portion of the bible you say i've left all my sins and i'm asking them i about idleness he that knows to do good and does not do it to him it's a sin I about bringing all your gifts and using it profitably for the calling of god in your life he that knows to do good you know how to read you are not reading and you know how to study you are not studying you have the textbooks you are not choosing them and you know how to prepare for the exam you are not preparing you know? that's part of the sin we need to repent of that we turn around and all the edges around us and all the things that slow us down we get rid of them march forward with determination and with devotion you'll get up in jesus name and of course all the other sins in your life all the other misbehavior in your life if you are going to get up and you are going to lead the people who are lawless do not come to leadership you need to have all that christ has provided in our liberation 
and then you lean on the savior of sinners you can lean on him you can lean on him you can depend on him you can trust him you can have confidence on him and you can have your petition your prayer centered on him and whatsoever you ask in the name of jesus he will grant it unto you and you learn from the scripture for success when you learn from the scriptures they'll tell the scriptures will tell you the path to success is not through the act of stealing of spying or cheating of looking at the works of other people and taking their work to be your work I'm going up I'm climbing up I'm swearing up then cheating will get out of your life stealing will get out of your life you will not steal the research work of other people and then put some little little alterations and make it your own that's not how to succeed if God is helping you to climb up and then you live loyally in the same steps of Christ who is the model of success who is the pathway to success who is the perfect example for success Christ the Lord Christ our Savior Christ the pacemaker and Christ the one that goes beyond and will follow and so you look at the steps of Christ what will Christ do and he says follow me as you follow his example as you follow his pattern as you follow his way of life that has, that's how to succeed in the realm of the kingdom if you follow the ways of the world the way they think they'll have success in the world if you follow them you'll not get to the final destination of heaven you might have earthly things but you'll not have uh, heavenly riches and heavenly value and you love uh, lawfully in the sunshine of his summer is giving us a sermon on the mount is giving us the way up is giving us the way to discover this is what we have if we follow the lord and it is when we follow that when we give our hearts our lives to him step by step day by day by the grace he offers by the goodness of his life penetrating our lives inspiring our lives and we're living according to the word he has revealed this way he leads us to that higher ground and then you lose yourself from the shackles of Satan. If some gang or some society has, you know, brought you in and they say, this is the in thing. This is what the people are high over there and the people are sparring to get there. This is the gang they join. You say no. 
no gang, no secret society. But I'm going to walk in the steps of the Savior. And I lose myself from the shackles of Satan. That is when his uplifting hand will take hold of you. He will lift you up. Higher. Higher. Let's go to Ayla. I said higher. It is when God takes us up. He life breaks us. He lifts us up. And we move on. That is how his life breaking power will so work in our lives. And we are going to go higher. And we labor in the strength of the Lord. We labor in the strength of the Lord. That is what takes us from where we are to where he has planned where we'll be. Number one, when he's satisfied with where we've been, just merry going round. And then number two, we have the decision and the dedication that we're going to follow is highway to life's liberation. Number three, now we have the diligence and the heavenly way for the Lord. The diligence, the commitment, the consecration, the one mind, one heart, we devote to following the Lord. The diligence. In many parts of the Bible, we're told to give diligence to what we're pursuing. That means your mind will not turn here, will not turn there. A man of one goal. A man of one purpose. A man of one desire. A man of one dedication. A man of one path. That you are on and on and on and you are going there. The Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. Actually, Solomon is asking a question. Solomon was a diligent man. From his youth. And he had the diligence to follow through in what the Lord had called him to. And he said he was not the only one that was diligent. He was not the only one that pursued and pursued and pursued until he got what he wanted. He said, Seest thou a man diligent in all his ways, he shall stand before the kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Have you seen a student diligent in his way? Have you seen a boy, a girl diligent in her way? Have you seen a researcher diligent in his way? Have you seen somebody with consecration and with concentration? And his mind will not be diverted here and there. Seest thou a man diligent in his ways? He will not stand before mean men. He will not stay before mean men. He will not join himself with the never do well people. He will stand before kings. In the language of today, it will stand, it will work in the office of the president. You 
You didn't say amen to that one. It's when we have that diligence. And we show the same diligence unto the end. It's the, that purpose of mind. It is that goal we have. And we're diligent in everything we do. Somebody said, the way you do one thing in your life is the way you will do all the rest of the things you do in life. You learn to be diligent in one thing, in one area of your life. You are going to be diligent in other areas of your life too. Diligent in prayers and supplication. Diligent in your study. And in your profession. You're diligent in every area of your lifestyle. That's when you have the place on high that you ought to have. What way do you follow diligently? What way do you follow with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind? The way of the Lord. Here is the way of God, the way of the Lord. He has shown everything in the world. And now we follow with decision. We follow with dedication. We follow with diligence the way of the Lord. If there is any way, any path that is shown to you, and somebody says, Follow this way, you don't just jump up and follow any way, you will check up. Is this the way of God? If there is if there is evil there, that's not the way of God. If there is sin there, that's not the way of God. If that's the way the drunkards take and the evil people take, that's not the way of the Lord. To get up, to rise up, to go up, to mount up, one, we must follow the way of God. We must follow the way of salvation. If I follow this way, I may get money. Will I have salvation? If I follow this way, I may have recognition by people. Is that the way of salvation? If I follow this way, I may have pleasure for one night or even for the rest of life. Is that the way of salvation? The way we follow, so we come up higher. The way we follow, so we get to the mountain top. It's the way of God. It's the way of salvation. It's the way of peace. It says the way of peace they do not know. The people who are fighting and striving for something higher in this world, the way of peace they do not know. And so you must ask yourself, this way I want to follow. Is, that way, is it the way of God? Is it the way of salvation? Is it the way of peace? Is it the way of righteousness? What I do, how I act, the path I follow, the way I follow is that the way of righteousness I must ask myself you must ask yourself 
Is that the way of truth and truthfulness? You may lie your way to get more things in this world. You may deceive most of the people all the time. And have this and have that dust and sand in the world. But you cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive the Almighty, the All Seeing Eye. If you are going to get up, if you are going to go up, if you are going to reach the land of promise, you must follow consistently every step of your life, every act of your life. You must follow the way of truth and truthfulness and then you must follow the way of his steps christ has left us an example and he suffered for us that we should follow his steps if christ won your situation today what way will he follow what steps will he show? What example will he leave us? And what action will he have in every area, every situation of your life? You must be asking yourself, What will Christ do? Will Christ get angry? Fight? Push the other person out of that place? I said, that's my place, that's my place. Ah, uh -uh, Christ will not do that. And because Christ will not do that, what will Christ do? What will Christ say? How will Christ act if you're going to get all your way to the top? You follow the way of his steps. And of course I'm sure you know that the way that leads to heaven the highest clean you can ever desire it is the way of holiness and he is the one that has the power to save us to grant us righteousness to grant us holiness and he said follow peace with all men good men and bad men with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord number one you have a desire in every area of my life you're not to be a cake that is burnt on one side and is still raw on the other side. Every part of your life, every part of your life, the spiritual and the secular, every part of your life, the professional and the purified life every area of your life personal in the family in the congregation at the university at the college every area of your life you want to have a desire for that high level of living and then in the area of your private spiritual endeavor you want to have that decision to start with and the desire you will live as you ought to live every area of your life if you are married in the family every area of your life if you are in the profession at the place of work 
every area of your life the way you live the way you stand the things you do the things you say you want to make sure that every step every act every deed is by the grace of god and that grace makes you to live to please the lord all the time and the lord is able i said the lord is able desire decision determination dedication diligence and god will take you to where he has ordained for your life in jesus name and everybody said amen let's rise up now and tell the lord it's not the usual normal cold prayer it's a prayer that shows a fiery desire that shows a firm decision lord i want to be there higher ground Higher ground. Higher ground. Higher ground. Come. Come. That's a verb, a word of action. From your heart, from your mind. Your more inner personality. From everything you have on the inside of you. A desire for that higher ground. Why don't you pray? Why don't you tell the Lord? Open your mouth and pray. Let him hear you pray. That you have the desire. You have the decision. And anything that will take you down rather than up you reject that thing you say no to that thing you say lord higher ground is only my pursuit show your desire your decision to the lord your desire your destination and your decision unto the Lord. Tell him. Cheer your desire to the Lord. Express your decision to the Lord. Lord, higher ground. Time of laziness over. Time of idleness over. Time of merry going round over. Wasting of time over wasting of your life over wasting of your destiny over splashing all your life all your skill all your energy here and there merry going around and going nowhere all that over Time of having friends and just wasting your life with them. Time of throwing precious hours away. All that over. Tell the Lord. He lifts you up. When you raise your hands by faith unto him. 
he lift you up ground off ground he lift you up all that disappointing situation he lift you up from that despair in life is the one that brings hope is the one that brings life is the one that brings excitement to life and bring success and joy to life talk to the lord he's right there to help you and if you say lord here i am with a great passionate fiery desire with a firm decision and with a fortified dedication but to say lord here i am if nobody ever goes up with me i am going up he'll do it he can do it when you surrender your heart and your life unto him when you give him everything without reservation and you say lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am lift me up take me up grant me heavenly diligence that i'll not be up and down up and down but all my life all my soul everything within me with focus and with dedication looking up at the place i need to get to help me lord it will help you talk to the lord tell him your desire tell him your pursuit tell him what you want you will do it believe him trust him have confidence in him that what you have asked for according to his will he grants you he cannot fail he has not lied unto you what he said he will do he meant to do that salvation the first thing you ought to aim at get at that one salvation salvation the first thing he wants you to have if you have that all the others will follow salvation tell the lord you have to forsake your sin forsake all that self-centeredness and forsake all that evil of humanity and call upon the name of the lord and say lord i know that jesus died for me to give me salvation he will do it he will do it he saves every sinner who repents and it brings a new life to them that new life is right there tell him and he will save you and whatever other challenge you have he has solution for every problem every challenge if you tell him he will grant you that solution
In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hand. You want salvation? You want solution? You want help? Age from heaven? You want the lifting hand to lift you up? Out of that dungeon of despondency and discouragement, you desire going up. You desire the lifting up, the liberation. Where are you? Let the Lord know you desire something good there. It doesn't matter what the church desire, what they don't desire. You as a person. As we pray now, God will answer our prayer. We're ready now to pray. If you're sick, you lay your hand where you're sick. If there's no vision, no sight, you lay your hand on your face. If there's no strength to rise up and forge ahead, you don't have any backbone to stand courageously. Lay your hand on that backbone and then the Lord strengthen you from the physical to the spiritual. The time of solution has now come. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a good God. The lifter up of our head, the lifter up of our lives, the lifter up of our soul, spirit, and our heart, the healer of our body, the one that gives solution to every problem. We come now as we invited us to come. We want the time of disappointment to be all over. The time of despair to be all over. The time of being in the dungeon to be all over. Lord, in your power. Lord, in your wonders. Lord, in your divine ability. Bring an end to the uselessness of life in Jesus' name. Those who are struggling or sin, living in sin, dying in sin, Lord, turn them around and let the power and the salvation come to everyone in Jesus' name. New life, righteous life, a holy life, a straightforward life, a good behavior, the righteousness that follows salvation. Give unto everyone now in Jesus' name. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. If any woman be in Christ, she's a new creature. That newness of life. Grant unto everyone that once that has decided for Christ now in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, that the confirmation of that salvation. The evidence of that salvation will be seen in every life that has believed in Jesus' name. We're asking Lord for anyone that has any form of sickness in their body. Touch them, transform their lives. Remove all that sickness. 
right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Any life that is pinned down with failure. Lord, I pray that your mighty power from heaven will take that failure away in Jesus' name. Now, lifting power for everyone. At what level, at whatever level they may be. I pray your life bridge and lift up everyone in Jesus' name. With the power of the Lord, with the lifting of the Lord, and with the help and aid of the Lord, I pray for everyone that has had your word this morning. They will go up higher. They will come up higher. They will walk forward higher. In their brain, in their mind, they will think of higher things. In the skill of their hand, they will do greater things as they walk through life. You protect everyone. You preserve everyone. You energize everyone. That will keep on walking without getting tired until we reach that higher ground don't leave anyone here alone in Jesus' name. When we get to that higher ground, we'll be stable and solid and steadfast on higher ground. And that will be a new platform for higher, higher, higher grounds and when we reach there you help us to look at the stars and we'll see greater things than we have achieved in Jesus name do it for everyone the youngest amidst us the oldest among us higher ground for everyone thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray and everybody said a dynamic amen turn to the one turn to the one by your side there Tell him, I'm going uh, to higher ground. Let heaven hear your voice. Amen for you in Jesus' name.